Welcome once again to Real Shame, a show where we two people talk about our list of movie blind spots or list of shame, whatever the heck you want to call it, movies that we have not seen that we are now watching and we are discussing amongst ourselves and for you. That's right. All right. So this week we're tackling a couple of films. Well, at least one film from my list, and that film is going to be Flight. All right. An airplane pilot saves almost all of his passengers on a malfunctioning airliner, which eventually crashed, which eventually crashed. But an investigation into the accident reveals something troubling. That's from IMDb, and that's Flight. How you feeling, Lip? And this report looks like you pulled some kind of move up there, man. You saved a lot of lives. How many? The 102 souls on board, including the flight crew, 96 of them survived the crash. So six people died, two crew, four passengers. Who, 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 who on the crew? Uh. Listen, the protocol is the protocol is that the NTSB has to be the first to make contact with you. I can't. And that agent's here, so let me go get him. It's a bit of a show. So just there's half a dozen of them. All right. All right. Flight came out in 2012. It is written by John uh, Gaines, I think. Is that how you say his name? Probably not. And it's directed by one Robert Bob Zemeckis. We've done a couple of Robert Zemeckis movies. Yeah. We did. We've actually done them around this time of year because we did his his uh, outings with Christmas movies and computer graphics and all that kind of stuff. Yep. This movie uh, stars Denzel Washington as Whip Whitaker. It has uh, Nadine Vasquez as Cater- was it Caterina Marquez as Kelly Riley as Nicole Bruce Greenwood as Charlie Anderson. And John Goodman as Harlan Mays. It's a movie that I've seen. I saw it when it came out in theaters. But it's a movie that you haven't seen. That's why we're watching it. And so what would you know about Flight going into it? And what would you think about Flight after watching it? Yeah, I remember this movie coming out. And I just you know, never got around to seeing it. Not for any real reason whatsoever. I, the only thing I really knew about this movie is I knew that he flew the plane upside down. Because I, I had heard people go, what's that movie where Denzel flies the plane upside down? And I'd go, I don't know. <laughs> and they'd go, flight. And I'd go, oh, okay. Thank so, you for answering your own question. Yeah. Yeah. So that's... Uh, <laughs> was that's that the a rhetorical all... question they were asking? I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, don't, I don't know. But uh, I was like, uh, sorry. Buddy, do I know you? Yeah. No. I, but yeah, that's... So I, people I really just stop you in the street. Hey, the movie Denzel flies... Well, and I think I knew that he was like an alcoholic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was an alcoholic. But I didn't know anybody else that was in it. I didn't know, you know, John Goodman or any of those people were, were going to be in it. So I was going, I was flying into it blind, I guess you could say. Uh, but I knew that, I, I think I also knew that it was kind of critically acclaimed or, or whatnot. But anyway, I, I, I liked it overall. I, I, I think the... The flight itself is very harrowing and, and yeah. very tense and, and is a is a cool scene. I mean, obviously it's scary for the you know people in, on the plane, but it's a very cool scene the way that it's handled and uh, very very interesting. I think Denzel Washington obviously his performance is good. Yeah. I mean, does Denzel Washington really do bad performances? I think the answer to that is no. The no. guy's been an institution for a long time yeah. and and is still an institution. He's a fantastic actor, one of the, you know, probably top 3 uh, actors, you know, working in the world today. I thought it was good. I think my biggest problem with the movie was because again, I think it's it's almost more of a character study because, yeah. you know, he crashes the plane and then for the rest of the film, he's a man who just continues continually sabotages himself yes right they give him chances and they they get him a lawyer and they're like you know we're going to dismiss the toxicology report that shows that you were drunk and that you were on drugs and we're going to do all these things for you but the guy just can't stop drinking yeah you know he just cannot stop drinking and he'll stop for a little bit and then he'll start back up his buddy john goodman is the hippie ex-hippie drug dealer kind of guy who who, probably used to walk backstage and give a bunch of rock stars probably so and, he, and all sorts of stuff. John Goodman always comes on screen to to uh, "Sympathy for the Devil" by the Rolling yeah. Stones. It's yeah. like his leap motif or, or whatever you want to call it. But the, I think my biggest problem with the movie, but this wasn't enough to make me dislike the movie, but it was the ending. 
where he's sitting yeah. in front of the committee and he's denying everything and he's saying, I'm not drunk, you know, I wasn't drunk, I haven't been drunk. And then he reverses course and yeah. admits that he was. It doesn't ring true for me at all because he spent the whole movie denying all these things. It, yeah. it would have made, to me, I would have liked it better if, because his, I, I don't know, that it was his girlfriend, but a girl that he was at least sleeping with or was involved with, played by Nadine Velasquez, yeah. Katarina, she dies in the crash. So he can basically pin Everything the vodka, over. empty vodka bottles, because they find empty vodka bottles. He can basically pin those on her. If she had like a son or something yeah. like that, you know, something that made him really think about it and, and made him more. I mean, you see him as they're traveling down in the elevator. He kind of looks at a little boy and see, you know, and I think that's supposed to maybe kind of trigger it. But he's basically sitting there telling, still telling lies yeah. and saying this. Is, and then all of a sudden when she's like, oh, so it was, you know, it belonged to Katarina or whatever. He's like, God help me. And she's like, what? And he's like, God help me. And then he mm-hmm. just admits the whole thing. It just, I, I find that completely false. I, yeah. I, I didn't like that at all. And I, I, I wrote, oh, Yvay, that ending. Because mm-hmm. as I was watching it, I was just like, oh, please don't do this. Please don't yeah. do this. Like, I was really hoping it wouldn't go like that. I mean, you want to see him kind of, you, you kind of want to see justice served. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not like that. Like, I was hoping they would go some go about it some other way. He gets through the trial. He, you know, he, he doesn't admit any wrongdoing. He doesn't tell the truth. And then somehow something else kind yeah, of yeah. gives him his comeuppance, if you will. Yeah, I, I don't have the issue that you have with him coming clean in the trial. I do think... It's not one of the stronger points of the movie. Yeah. But all the stuff, like where it cuts to and he's giving the AA meeting in prison and all this kind of stuff, that's what really rung false to me because it's just like, it just felt like all of a sudden this is like a moral tale. And it's mm-hmm. like, no, this this movie's not about, you know, some kind of moral story. This is, this is like you said, a character study. So I do think they could probably, I think it would have played better if, like you said, he would have got through the trial clean and then he would have got some come up and afterwards yeah. maybe like drunk driving accident or something like that and then not have the you know where he gets his life together 18 months in prison and giving a meetings and he meets up with his son and kind of like you know repairs that broken relationship all that kind of stuff like that last part just felt like like a studio note saying you can't end the movie sad and they're oh, like yeah, oh yeah absolutely. we gotta we gotta turn this thing around which yeah. which is terrible because it doesn't really fit with the whole movie yeah at some point he's going to admit wrongdoing you know yeah. and, and he does and it, but yeah it just doesn't ring true for me there's actually a movie that's on your list i'm not going to mention it because i feel like that would spoil it but it's a it's a classic film i have the same problem with it you have a character that is one way and one way only basically the whole movie yeah. one way one way and at the end they completely reverse course and it just does and i still like the movie but it just does not ring true at all for me. And I hate that. I hate that part. Because yeah, yeah. I'm like, that's not believable. Like, why yeah. did all of a sudden they have a change of heart? It's not earned. You know, yeah, they, yeah. they don't have like a development to get to that point. I mean, this movie, he, I mean, he he goes into the hotel room and they happen to have left the, the adjoining door to yeah. the other room kind of unlocked or whatever. He's able to get in there and get to all the drinks in there. He gets wasted the morning of yeah. his hearing. Yep. Yeah, I mean, this guy's, I don't want to say despicable, but I mean, he's he definitely he leaves a lot he's to be an, desired. I mean, he's an addict, you know. He's, and, yeah, and I think this. I mean, I've read like on IMDb trivia where you know people praise this, how accurate it is for portraying like that addictive, that addict nature and stuff like that. Which yeah. I don't know. You know, I can't speak about first, second, third hand. But I think that's cool. But I'm with you. I do think like it is a sharp turn. It feels out of place, and it's just like the question is why was that added? Yeah. Or why did they decide on that? I don't know if it was, you know, John Gantz or if it was Bob Zemeckis or if it was a studio or a combination of those. Maybe Denzel didn't want to play a completely bad guy. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, it, but it's weird. It, it really does distract from the movie. The other thing I feel like distracts from the movie is a little bit is all those needle drops. What do you think about those? We talked about Sympathy for the Devil for John yeah. Goodman all the time. Th- there's a few. I, d- I do recall yeah. that now that you say that. Yeah. It's They all seem like a little on the nose. You know, I, I know we've talked about like they they don't they're not trying for any deep cuts with any of these kind of music stuff. Yeah. And I think the movie would be better if they were kind of going for deep cuts, but it's just like oh, okay, we're going to play. Of course we're going to play the Rolling Stones Sympathy yeah. for the every Devil. Every time every time John Goodman's on yeah, screen, yeah, yeah. it's Sympathy for the Devil. Or of course we're going to play this song by whatever the Doors or whoever. It's just yeah. like it seems like it's like okay. So that those that, those are the two big 
critiques I have, because I'm with you. I like this movie. I think I like it a little bit more than when I first watched it. Yeah. I didn't watch it when it came out in theaters. I watched it like on, on video or, you know, on rental or something like that a couple years afterwards. And I'm with you. It's it's a good movie. Denzel does a great performance. It's interesting, but it's handicapped by, you know, the kind of jarring musical choices a little bit and the the ending for sure really kind of takes away from the movie, I think. Yeah, solid performance. And I think a solid story and a good study of this guy and his, again, his uh, tendency to just not really make the right yeah. choices. Uh, so it's worth seeing alone, I think, just for that. And, and the whole plane sequence, I think, is really good and, yeah. and handled really well. But yeah, I, I think the ending mars it slightly. And but... we don't see the plane sequence like 40 times during the movie. Which is good. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Uh, is that some foreshadowing? <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say... Um, Oh, there's a, there's one other question I want to say, but yeah. there's some trivia notes I wanted to add. So basically, this film was inspired at least partly by an accident that, uh, uh, or partially inspired by a real life disaster that happened on the Alaska Airlines was at two sixty one on January of two thousand, and it took John Gaines uh, ten years to write the whole screenplay, and Robert Zemeckis. This was his first live action movie since Castaway in two thousand because he did. You know, um, the Polar Express, and then he did a Christmas Carol, and then this was right after a Christmas Carol. Yeah. Um. Uh, oh, I, I wrote down it was nominated for Best Actor and Best Original Screenplay, but it won neither. Gotcha. So Kirby and I were talking about this movie, uh, and she and so the the question she asked me is, was Denzel Washington able to perform that maneuver because he was like because his reasoning was inhibited due to drinking or was he, that's her, that was her theory. Or my theory is just, he's just that good of a pilot that drunk or sober, he could have pulled it off. Have you thought about that at all? Is that, is that, I did not think about that. I mean, I, I, okay. I don't know. I mean, I, I think, I feel like he's just a very professional pilot that even, even though he was inhibited Impaired, in some yeah. way. And, and I mean, he's like a professional drunk, so he yeah. could hold his alcohol yeah, yeah. Yeah, to a point. And I mean, he he at least was was a, was functioning and yeah. knew what he was doing. So I think he's just that good of a pilot that even intoxicated, I think he could still do it. But right. Yeah, I think he still might have pulled it off. If he was sober, but but who knows? Yeah, I think that's a good question. Actually, yeah. it's just good something, question to, to ask. something to think about. Yeah. All right. Well, that's anything else you like to add on the? No, I was going to jump yeah. into the old Rotten Tomatoes. Let's it's seventy seven percent fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, seventy five percent for the audience. Roger Ebert gave it four out of four stars wow. and named it the sixth best film of the year. Wow. Any idea what number one of 2012 was for Roger Ebert? It won Best Picture, if you remember what won Best Picture for 2012. Uh, it has been at Ben Affleck, Ben Affleck in it. Oh, is it? Is it? Um, is, is it the town? Nope. Is Sorry. it Argo? Yep, Argo. Oh, yeah. I like and, Argo. And Argo is the best film of the year, but Flight was the number six best movie of the year. Leonard Maltin gives it three out of four stars, and if you Want to watch or rewatch Flight? It is currently streaming on Hulu, and I also saw that it was on Paramount Plus. I don't have Paramount Plus, but if you have Paramount Plus or Hulu, you can watch it on either one of those, and it's you know readily available on DVD or Blu-ray or whatever. Uh, so yeah, sounds good. Yep. All right. Well, we always like to follow up our Monday episodes with what we've been watching. So that what have you watched since the last time we talked? I have been busy watching because No Time to Die came out on Blu-ray. I actually rewatched all of the Daniel Craig Bond movies. Some good, some bad. Up to uh, up to the newest one, which I had not seen. No Time to Die. I li- I really like the Daniel Craig Bond movies. I wasn't as big, I think, on. I, I know you don't do not like Quantum of Silas. So- Silas Quantum of yeah, Solace. Yeah. I like Quantum of Solace and. Weirdly enough, like it's not one of my favorites, but I, I, I think it's the shortest Bond movie that there is because it's like an hour and forty five minutes. Well, they like that. they pieced it together during the writer's yeah. strike, yeah. which is why I, I, I know. But I, I don't know. I, I just like it. I like Olga Olga Kurilenko as yeah. the Bond girl. I like the like hotel thing that they wind up at in the desert at the, yeah. in the, the climax of it. I think that's pretty cool looking. But uh, anyway, so I watched yeah, all of them because they do have an overarching kind of story. Mm-hmm. So that's Corsino Royale, Quantum of Solace, uh, Skyfall, Spectre, and then finally No Time to Die. And I think Skyfall and Spectre, I, I, 
elevated a little bit more this time around. Uh, and probably just because I watched them all basically in succession over yeah. like a couple of days. I, no Time to Die was just okay to me. I, I really liked the part where he teams up with Ana de Armas. Yeah, I, I love that part. Yeah, that, the movie just like shifts into high gear at that yeah. point. And then it's just like... The rest of the movie, you're kind of like, oh, I missed that so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, and, and I mean, I, like if they made like a Bond spinoff where Bond teams up with I, I, Paloma, I believe is her yeah, character's yeah. name. And when he teams up with Paloma, I would eat it up. Like I really love that part. She's so cool in this movie. Like it's a yeah. really, really cool and fun part and scene of that movie. But yeah, the rest of it, I felt like was a bit of a letdown. Obviously, I'm not going to spoil it because we're not reviewing it. But it, I mean, it, it definitely has some kind of interesting choices. I thought Rami Malek was a fairly weak villain, yeah. and I never really got much of his motivation. Also, there's not a very big age difference between him and the girl that plays Leah Sedu. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or I'm sorry, I think that is her name. Uh, I forget what her name is in the. That's the actress's name, but I forget what her character's name is. Anyway, there's not much of it, but in, but he's supposed to have like saved her. It's like when she was like a little girl and stuff, yeah. and I was like, what? So I thought that was odd, but yeah, I thought he was kind of a weak Bond villain. And overall, I I just thought it was. He's not very bizarre. menacing. No, not at all, not at all. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I but yeah, the the part with Paloma was awesome, and it was yeah. nice to see Jeffrey Wright in the movie once again as Felix Leiter because he hasn't been in him in a while. So that was cool. But I'm all caught up on Bond until the next. Whoever is the next Bond. Yeah, for sure. So, what have you? What about you? What have you? What have you been watching? Well, you've watched a British-based franchise, and I, Kirby and I have watched another British-based franchise. Ooh. So, I talked a couple weeks ago about watching all the Harry Potter films, which I do every year around Christmas because you know they don't really take place at Christmas, but there's some scenes from Christmas, like mm-hmm. especially in the earlier movies. And Kirby has never seen the um, the Fantastic Beasts movies. Good. So we watched Nor both of, <laughs> both of the Fantastic Beasts movies. I've seen them. I saw them both in theaters. So it was a rewatch for me. I've warmed up to the Fantastic Beasts movies. I probably because I know what I'm getting out of it, mm-hmm. and I know I'm not getting the really good Harry Potter kind of vibes and movie and let's say excellence, but maybe not excellence. But I know I'm not getting a great Harry Potter kind of Wizarding World movie from these. So. My expectations were, you know, lowered a little bit with these and stuff. But there's some, I, I, you know, I, it's kind of got me excited for the third one. And I, I'm probably going to get, uh, it's probably going to blow back in my face and, and be, you know, and not be as good as I'm exciting, excited for or anything like that. But I kind of, I'm kind of ready for it. And I, 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 like I said, I enjoyed the rewatching of these. I know they've recast Don, Johnny Depp, and I'm, we're not going to talk about, obviously, the reasons why or his personal life, but I do think he wasn't as very strong as Grindelwald, so I do like, even though they're recasting him, I do think it's probably going to be for the best, because mm-hmm. I don't think he added a whole lot to the movies. So, I don't know. So, that's what we've been watching, the two Fantastic Beast movies, uh, which are which are good. They're not great. They're not terrible. They're they're good. It's a good way to spend an afternoon. All right. All right. So what did you pair Flight with? So I definitely went on the nose like Robert Zemeckis' movie, music choices for this. And it's like, all right, we're doing a movie about a plane crash. What's another movie that came out about a plane crash? And uh, decided to go with Sully that came out in 2016. It's a movie I haven't seen, but have you seen it before? I have seen it once right. before, yeah. So I've never seen it. So I figured, hey, why not pair these two movies together and be interesting to see how um you know robert zemeckis did it and how uh, clint eastwood did it so that's what i did all righty all right well stay tuned wednesday to see our review on Sully. let us know how you feel about flight leave a comment down below if you're watching us youtube or shoot us an email if you're listening to us real shame at gmail.com we also answer viewer questions that are sent to that email address so please send us your viewers questions uh please like subscribe share do all that social media stuff with the show and the episodes it really does help and we really do appreciate that and stay tuned for wednesday when we find out if Sully will sink or fly but you know if you if you pay attention in real life you know what happens (laughs) (laughs) we'll see you soon guys bye